Before I get into this video, I just want to remind you we do have a giveaway going on right now for a Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Nintendo Switch OLED edition, a collector's edition of Tears of the Kingdom, and a pin from PAX East. Just head on to the pin comment and or the description to enter. Also, we're on our road to 133,000 subscribers, so I'd appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe to the channel. All right, guys, we got to talk about something that popped up in one of the previews, uh, you know, a handful of days ago that I didn't talk about because... I wanted to make sure I checked it out myself. It's because it came from a preview that was behind a paywall, and I was a little bit iffy on if I wanted to, you know, pay, pay, pay to read the article, right? Like, I've seen so many other previews without needing to do this, but this is the only preview that talked about Tears of the Kingdom in this way. And in the end, I decided, you know what, it was worth subscribing, and I'm not going to be able to show you the article because I do think if somebody puts it behind a paywall... Uh, it's not right to really show you the article, but what I can do is read off some quotes from it. And these quotes are quite interesting because they paint Tears of the Kingdom as an extremely massive game. Now, we already knew. I mean, Breath of the Wild's pretty big, but there's plenty of games bigger than Breath of the Wild just in terms of world size. But how big is this game? Because right now, one of the largest games that exist in the world at this moment, at, at the time of recording, is Elden Ring, right? Elden Ring felt like it might have been a smaller game, but it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger the more you played it. Well, it does look like that is also going to be the case here with Tears of the Kingdom, that the more we play the game, the bigger and bigger the game is going to get. But how big? <sighs> well, what if I were to tell you that they say this could be bigger than Elden Ring itself? Here's the exact quotes. Thanks to the addition of underground and sky areas, there appears to be far more area to explore than what was available in the also gargantuan Elden Ring a game that famously seemed to get bigger the more you played thanks to the addition of underground and sky area. Tears of the Kingdom includes underground cave networks, not just on the ground though, but also within the sky islands. And this was posted, of course, by the Washington Post and created by Gene Park, which to note, Gene Park used to be a video game journalist at several other major outlets, so... No surprise that now that he works at the Washington Post, it's actually kind of nice to have somebody who's familiar with video games writing about video games over there. So this this is someone who, who someone who kind of knows what they're talking about here. And I, I think what's interesting is this is the first time we've heard about how the cave networks work, right? And this might be why they think the game's going to be so huge. Like, oh, we knew there was going to be caves. We knew there was going to be sky islands. But there's a network of caves, and there's caves within the islands. And we know that we saw a small cave, but a network of caves within the islands is cool because that adds layers to the sky islands themselves. It's not just the surface and the climbing and the, the, the ponds and the lakes and the whatever. There's also like actual caves in the sky islands. There's obviously networks of caves on the ground. And this just means the game is so much more full of just areas to explore that while obviously we can't say this is definitively bigger than Elden Ring, Already in the small area, they got to play the 70 minutes worth of demo time. They got to play with this game. It already feels bigger than Elden Ring to this writer, Gene Park. And that is, that's flabbergasting to think about how massive Breath of the Wild already was, how much bigger Elden Ring is. And now because of the way they approach the world building here, how much bigger Tears of the Kingdom might be. This, to me, is maybe one of the most unsung things about this game is we've talked about, you know, the story elements and how little we really know about that and if there'll be dungeons or if there'll be underwater exploration, which, by the way, if there is, would just make this world even bigger. Although, to note, so far, we cannot swim underwater. Uh, we do have that one swim animation when you jump into the bubble that we saw in one of the trailers, but we haven't seen any ability to swim underwater. And it was confirmed by the people who played the demo that at least in the area they were in, at least at the part of the game they were in, you could not swim underwater. We speculated you might need a special item or gear or iron boots or some sort of thing uh, to be able to go underwater if there is underwater exploration, because that's been typical in other Zelda games as well, right? Like, you've been able to maybe dive for a few seconds, but 
underwater swimming was through, always through some sort of item or mechanic. So that doesn't mean there won't be underwater swimming, but at least right now there isn't. And if there is, that would just add another layer of exploration and make the world feel even bigger. So look, Tears of the Kingdom is obviously one of the most, if not the most anticipated Nintendo game of all time. And I think it's fair to say that, not just because, you know, it's clearly going to sell really well out the gate. We don't know how well, but it's looking like it's going to be almost, maybe potentially the fastest selling Zelda game of all time. There's also a lot to consider when we're just talking about where this game is going to stand in the pantheon of Switch games. Switch already has so many mega successes, not just Breath of the Wild, which is technically a Wii U game, but the Mario Odysseys, the Animal Crossings, the Mario Karts, even though Mario Karts technically a Wii U game. But you know what? At this point, with all the tracks being added, I guess I, I, I can see why people might consider it more of a, a, a Switch game at this point. But, you know, you've got so many bangers out there from Fire Emblem Three Houses, Luigi's Mansion 3, uh, you know, even Scarlet and Violet for all of its flaws and technical issues still has some good things to it underneath Pokemon Legends Arceus as well. There's just the list of amazing games on Switch is never ending. We didn't even touch on like Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and 3 and Splatoon 2 and 3. Oh man, the the, the, the pantheon of amazing games on Switch is is hard to, to, to even wrap your mind around when you think about all of this on a single generation of systems. And then you have Tears of the Kingdom, which it, it, it feels in a way that this might not only be the best game Nintendo's ever produced themselves internally, it also feels like this could be it. This could be the swan song for the Nintendo Switch. And I know we've talked for a while on if, you know, this would be the last major game and people argue, though it can't be, we at least have Pikmin and probably Metroid Prime 4. And I get there's going to be more games coming on Switch. This isn't the final game. But the final game of this magnitude, I mean, Pikmin 4 is in, looks like it's going to be incredible, but Pikmin 4 isn't the same magnitude, isn't the same level of game as a Tears of the Kingdom or, say, a Mario Odyssey. We're talking like the upper echelon of the best of the best Nintendo can output. And Pikmin 4, again, going to be incredible. It's not Breath of the Wild. It's not Zelda. It's not Tears of the Kingdom. So I do think that there is a potential this might be the last game of this type to be quote unquote exclusive. I do think the next generation platform, just from what we've learned from Nintendo already, is going to be backwards compatible. It's going to have cross platform play. So you're going to be able to play Tears of the Kingdom on the new system. But I am just, I am enthralled by the idea this game might be as large as it is because one of my favorite things to do in Tears of the Kingdom, or I'm sorry, Breath of the Wild, was explore. I didn't know I could have this much fun exploring, just traversing the world and exploring, even if I didn't find anything. The act of traversal was so much fun, and they've increased the traversal with the Ultra Hand and all these abilities so much. Uh, Ascend, I think, is going to be critical in exploration that it's led me to realize that if this game is going to be so much bigger than Breath of the Wild, bigger than Elden Ring, I'm just so excited to start exploring all over again. In fact, don't be surprised if like the first 12 hour session that I play of this game, the Friday it comes out uh, on live stream with you guys, if I'm just sitting there literally exploring the world and that's like all I do, just explore, explore, explore because, oh, it was so much fun in Breath of the Wild and I can't imagine how much fun it's going to end up being in Tears of the Kingdom. Anyways, guys. I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jets from the Center Prime. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let me know if you're excited about how large this game is. Uh, do you think it will ultimately end up bigger than Elden Ring? This is just one person's opinion. And again, it's the only preview even making this comparison. But also, maybe Gene Park was just a massive fan of Elden Ring. Uh, and so it's just more apt to make a comparison to that game. Anyways, you guys are awesome. And I'll catch you in the next video. <laughs> <laughs>